Amen. 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 That's the prayer of King David. Right after Nathan pointed a finger in his face and said, You're the man. You're the man that's done this. Amen. You're the, you're the one that's guilty. Yes, that's right. And King David would cry out to the Lord, Take the throne. Mm -hmm. Take the throne, Lord, but please don't take your spirit from that's me. Right, right. Take the kingdom, Lord, but don't take your spirit from me. That's right, man. Amen. We was talking about that winter jam, and unfortunately, a lot of these people that's involved in that stuff, just to get that out the way real quick, their prayer would really be, I can do without the Spirit, just give me the crowd. I can do without the Spirit of God, just give me the people to worship what I'm doing. That's what the, the heart of a lot of these people are, yeah, truly. Really and it, and it, it tells in what's being done and what's being manifested in that stuff. But if you get a chance to watch that, um, about that winter jam that we talked about, you definitely, I would recommend it. I think it's a, it was a good watch. I listened to it today. It's about 50 minutes. And uh, they really did a good job. Brother Luke did a good job. Pastor Voss and Brother Tom Wilson of really just bringing out Scripture to verify what they were saying. And, and pointing out some things that's really it's not of God, you know, and people would say, oh, well, you're just a legalist. No, we're the furthest thing from being uh, legalistic. Those of us that preach the message of the cross, we're not even close to legalistic, but at the same time, we, we do have discernment. And we do take a stand for what's of God and what's not of God and what's of His Holy Spirit and what's not of His Holy Spirit. That's not being legalistic. That's called being a discerner of what's right and what's wrong and I think that we're in a, a age and now today and it's not just started today but it's been going on for a long time that people don't really like to discern between what's right and what's wrong what's of God and what's not of God they let a lot of times children dictate what needs to be done in the in the youth group and what needs to be done uh, this will make people want to come to youth group if we do this and we do that but that's never what it's been about but that's a whole other subject. I could go off on that. Right. Needless to say, that's what it was like whenever I was a youth. Mm -hmm. And looking back, looking back now, I can see why the majority of those people that did the youth groups back then aren't serving the Lord any longer. Because there was no discernment. There wasn't an understanding. And, and unfortunately, because of that, also the ones that they youth grouped over, a lot of those aren't truly serving the Lord any longer. I mean, it's, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to tell it like it is. That's the reality of the matter. Not a whole lot of people are, and we could talk about that for a minute. Not a whole lot of people, because I was thinking about this before service. Not a whole lot of people are truly being discipled in the Word of God. Nowadays, when people get saved in most churches, and I know because I sat under it, when people get saved, basically what the church tries to do is bring them in and make them a part of the, the church programs. Go do this. Come and do that. Come and be a part of what we got going on. Come and help us do this. Come and help us do that. And that'll, that'll help you to be a Christian. And, and that's, that's fooey, man. Yes, that's, that's a lie. That's not right. People ought to be being discipled in the Word of God. People ought to be being taught what salvation is, yes. what it means to be saved, what happened right. when they got saved, how that they're to walk by faith and not by sight in the blood of Jesus, the precious faith of, of Christ, who He is and what He did at Calvary. That's what people ought to be being discipled in, not hanging out in groups. Mm -hmm. Not hanging out in groups and uh, when you have a problem, run to the church house or run to the preacher. That's not what this is all about. No. It's about understanding right. the Word of God and growing yes. in the grace and the knowledge yes. of the Lord. Yes. So that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to do here mm -hmm. is to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, to have a better understanding of the Word of God, of God's plan of redemption for mankind, and how that it affects our lives on a daily basis. Let me tell you, you've entered into a process, Christian, a process that is not always easy, it's not always fun, it's oftentimes painful, but it is life, and it's life more abundantly, because when you're in the process, and the Holy Spirit is working in you, desiring to work through you, He will lead you to seek a more abundant life. Amen. He will lead you to seek a life higher than bar rooms. That's right. Higher than getting drunk. Higher than getting stoned. Yes. Higher than impressing other people. That's right. What I see going on in the world today sickens me. Just recently, not too long ago, I saw pictures on Facebook posted of a drag queen show that took place right here on the bayou. 
People going and taking part of it, claiming that they're Christians and they love God. You're a liar. That's right. You might think you love God, but you don't. No, nope. that's right. You don't. You might love a form of God, uh -huh. that's right. but when you partake in something like that, and you're pleased in something like that, the Spirit of God is not living in you. Nope. Thus, you're not living for Him. That's right. And that's not being mean and that's not being rude. That's just being honest. That's right. Amen. You've been deceived. Your eyes are closed. You're Amen. blinded yes. by darkness. But this is what's going on around us. That's right. There's no way 10 years ago that that would have been accepted on this by you. There's no way 10 years ago people would have bragged about it. Maybe not even 5 years ago. But it's the norm today. Yes. Here. Yeah. I'm not talking about California. Uh, no. I'm not talking about New Orleans. No. I'm not talking about New York. I'm talking about on the bayou. Yes. This is what's taking place. Mm -hmm. And it's getting worse. And, and it's getting worse. And it's going to continue to wax worse and worse and worse. And let me tell you something, Kristen. You better be ready to make a stand. Mm -hmm. That's right. You better be ready to realize that you ain't meant to be everybody's friend. No, you're not. You better be realizing that you ain't meant for everybody to like you. As a matter of fact, you ain't meant to like everybody. That's right. You ain't meant to seek their approval. Mm -hmm. You aren't meant to seek their friendship and their partnership in this life. And we better come to that conclusion right. that the closer we draw to the end, that we better grow closer together. That's right. Yes, amen. We better grow closer together in this Christendom. Yes. In true Christianity. That's right, man. Because it's going to get rough out there. Yes, very rough. It's going to get rough. You're going to have to stand up for things sometimes that, to, to find out if you're going to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You're going to have to find out if you're going to be like Daniel. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have to be like some of those in the Old Testament that yeah. stood up for what they believed and said, O oh, King, O oh, King, whether He saves me or not, my God is able. That's right, man. And I will not bow. That's right. I will not bow. I will not accept your falseness or, or, or your lies. I will not accept it and I will not stand with it and say it's okay. As a matter of fact, I was thinking about that today. Uh, thinking about how that if a lot of people that I worked with would hear how I preached, that they probably wouldn't like me a whole lot. But Don said, I don't even like you and I come to your church. <laughs> Amen. They, you still love me, brother. Amen. I love you too. I appreciate you. But that's just the truth of the matter. That's right. That's the truth of the matter is things are getting rough out there. And I, I was really blown away at what I saw. I was really blown away at the things I saw and how it was just so readily accepted. But not only accepted, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, I hate when that happens. Not only accepted, but celebrated. It was not only accepted, but celebrated. Very disheartening. People need to be taught the Word of God. That's right. People need to get saved. But we're in Romans chapter 4, and verse 10 is where we'll start. We're still talking about this great subject of justification by faith. God's plan of redemption for humanity. And we're about to transition here shortly not only into justification, what it means to be justified by faith, but how it is that we walk by faith. <coughs> if I can get there. Romans chapter 4 and verse 10. How was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. I think I might have wanted to actually start a little bit before that. Bless, let me start at verse 8. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. So, what's the blessedness being talking about here, that's being talked about? The blessedness that's being talked about is blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. 
Blessed is the man to whom the Lord, the Lord will not hold accountable for sin in his life. To whom he will not be judged with sin in his life. Blessed is that man. Blessed is the man to whom sin is, is not imputed by the Lord. So blessed is the man whom the Lord calls righteous. Amen. Blessed is the man whom the Lord justifies by the blood of Jesus. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision? Or in uncircumcision. Not in uncircumcision, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. What the writer here is saying, what Paul's saying, is that Abraham was counted righteous some several hundred years before he was ever circumcised. He was counted righteous some several hundred years before the law ever ever came about. Abraham was before Moses. That's right. Abraham was before Moses. As a matter of fact, Abraham was before Moses. Isaac was before Moses. Mm -hmm. Jacob was before Moses. Right. Joseph was before Moses. Mm -hmm. The twelve princes of Israel were before Moses. That's right. I believe there were some 400 years Abraham was counted righteous before the law was even brought forth. So what was it that made Abraham righteous? Was it the law that he kept? Was it the fact that he was circumcised? And the writers trying to bring that across to the these people it's not the law it's not circumcision it's none of these things that causes God to bless you by not calling you a sinner and imputing righteousness into your bank account no Abraham believed God he believed God and he received the word says and he received the sign of circumcision a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised so the circumcision was nothing but an outward sign of the covenant that Abraham had with God because he believed God and God had called him righteous. Mm -hmm. Abraham believed God mm -hmm. and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. And then God would instruct Abraham sometime later to circumcise himself and everyone in the camp mm -hmm. because it's a, it's a sign. Yes. It's a sign between you and I. Been reading in the book of Exodus lately and I read about Moses and how that Moses when he was a little boy they put him in the water. She put him in the water and the, the, the girl went and pulled him out and said oh look a Hebrew boy. We know that she knew that he was a Hebrew boy because he was circumcised. He was set apart. He wasn't like an Egyptian boy. I found it interesting a little later when, it, when Moses would flee to the desert that he would meet these girls and the, the one of the girls that he would marry, I believe it might have been Zipporah was her name, they would go and, and tell their father that an Egyptian helped us out. An Egyptian helped us out. On the outward appearance, because they couldn't see the sign of the circumcision that Moses had, Moses had been raised as an Egyptian. He carried himself as an Egyptian. Yes. The women, when they dealt with him, they automatically thought he was an Egyptian. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm talking about? The sign that was given to, to Abraham that was passed down to Moses. The sign of circumcision was a sign, a fleshly sign to set God's people apart from the rest of the world. That's right. It was to set them apart. And Abraham received that sign based off the faith that he had. And it was nothing more than just a, a sign. The circumcision was to be merely an outward sign of covenant. That covenant being based on him believing God. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed, unto them also. Now remember that word imputed means given, to be passed unto, to be given to, imputed, that righteousness may be given unto them. And the father of circumcision, to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had yet been uncircumcised. Not to just the Jews who are Jews of the flesh, but to those of us who are not Jews of the flesh, but to those of us who walk after the steps of Abraham, who walk after the steps of faith, 
trusting in God's plan for humanity. And we're going to look, we're going to really get into this plan just a little bit further of how it was handed to Abraham. And we'll see some typologies and how that translates into our lives. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now we've got to make an establishment here. We've got to establish something. We need to establish this seed who the promise was given to. Right here it says, For the promise, I'm going to read it again, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now I want to run over to Galatians. Galatians chapter 3 real quick in verse 15. And we're going to try to come back and read the whole of Galatians chapter 3 because it really all ties into what we're teaching right here out of Romans chapter 4. But for now, I just want to go to 15 just to see what we're looking at. I'm in, I'm in Romans, I'm sorry. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 15. And the Word of God says, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one. To Abraham and to his seed, not as many seeds, but one seed. And to thy seed, which is Christ. We know from the Word of God, we know from the genealogies and the lineages that are in the Word of God that, that, that Jesus was a son of Abraham, a son of David, son of Abraham, son of man, son of God. But He was the seed of Abraham that the promise was given to. That the promise was given to. And, and He was the one that came and fulfilled the law. He was the one that came and made the covenant. He was the covenant keeper. Not only was He and is He the covenant keeper, but He is our covenant. Do you understand? He is our covenant. And that's how that we enter into covenant with God is by having faith in the covenant that He made between Himself and His Son Jesus. He made a covenant, the Word of God says He made a covenant with Himself. He made a covenant with Himself when He made a covenant with His Son, Jesus. And by faith, you and I, we become partakers of that covenant. Amen. We become partakers of what Christ accomplished. Christ came and He fulfilled the law. He, he led the law to a T. He did everything that was required of Him through the law. The thing about you and I was, even if that one of us did happen to live according to the law all of our lives, we still have something against us that we're the offspring of Adam. But when we enter into covenant with God through the covenant that He has with Christ, do you understand that I keep, I keep wanting to point out that it's the covenant that He has with Christ? You've got to get this. This covenant is between God the Father and God the Son. Jesus Christ the man. Jesus Christ the Son of God. Jesus Christ the Logos, the Word. The everlasting Word who was with God and who is God. John chapter 1 tells us that in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among men. That's right. amen. God made a covenant with His Son Jesus. Yes, amen. And we see that right here. That's what it says. And to thy seed, which is Christ. Mm -hmm. So we understand that the covenant... The covenant that Abraham was accounted righteous for was not the covenant so much of Abraham, but the future covenant of Christ, that Christ would come in. Okay, now yes, there's an Old Testament covenant, the law and, and, and circumcision, that was all part of that. But all of that was based off of, it was all based off of looking to the future and what Christ would come to do and accomplish on Calvary's cross. That's right. Everything in the Old Testament looked forward to what Christ would do at Calvary and on beyond that. And everything in the New Testament for you and I looks back to who Christ is and what Christ did for us at Calvary's cross. Understanding that we can be partakers and we can have part of, we can take part of everything that was given to Christ, everything that is afforded Christ because of who He is and what He did for you and I. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me slow down. Let me stop. Okay. 
Christ is the Son of God. We understand that. Yes, He's the Son of God. He's the heir yes. of Almighty God. Everything that belongs to God the Father, God the Father has given to His Son, Christ Jesus. Right. Now I want to tell you that that does us no good. No. What do you mean, preacher? I'm telling you that that does you no good. Mm -mm. Because you're on the outside of that looking in. That's right. Just that right there does none of us any good. But, because of who Christ is, and now what He did, what He accomplished on our behalf, we can become partakers, join heirs with Christ, the Word of God tells us, because of the cross. Amen. Because of what He did there for us. Yes. See, without the cross, without the blood, you and I, we have no claim to anything. You and I, we're on the outside looking in, waiting for judgment. But because of Calvary, because of what Jesus did there for you and I, we are partakers. We can be partakers in that. If we continue to walk therein. Walking in covenant, walking by faith, amen, not by sight. And we're going to dig a little bit further into that. We're going to go back to, uh, to, to Romans chapter 4 and verse 13. Do y'all see why I wanted to go there? I wanted to point out the seed. Because it's important that we understand the seed. It's important that we understand why we have access, why we get to have what we have. None of this hinges off of what you've done or what you do or what you don't do. None of this hinges off of that. You're receiving anything from God doesn't hinge off of any of that. No, it hinges off of you being in covenant with God. It hinges off the covenant that Christ has established on your behalf. Oh, well, that's too easy, preacher. Yeah, well, you try to live it for a little while and find out how easy it is. Verse 13. For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. What do you mean? Well, if it's of the law, you don't have access to it. Because the law and you are not buddies. You're a lawbreaker. You're not a law keeper. You never have been and you never will be. I don't care how many laws you think you've kept. You never will be a law keeper. You never can be a law keeper. Not in and of yourself. Not except for by faith. I want to go to Galatians. I want to go back to Galatians chapter 3 real quick. Galatians 3 verse 26. And I told you we're going to be traveling back and forth between this. Because Galatians brings out a lot of the stuff that we're talking about. Verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Yeah, right. You see how you became an heir. Mm -hmm. Amen. You were baptized into Christ. That's right. At your salvation, at your initial salvation experience. This is what I'm talking about that people need to be taught. That the moment that they got saved, the moment that they were truly spiritually born again, that by faith from the Spirit of God, they were placed into the death of Christ and they became one with Him. Oh, but we've heard that a hundred times. Well, if you get tired of hearing that, man, I don't know what to tell you. If you get tired of knowing that God don't look at you, but He sees Jesus when He looks upon you, man, I'm Amen. telling you, you got some issues because I don't want Him to see me. I don't want Him to look upon me. I know I'm, I, I'm like Abraham. I know this body's dead. I know that I ain't even got another Ishmael left in me. That's right. This body's dead. Yes. And it can bring forth nothing that will, will bring any goodness to God. That's right. But right here we see that we become joint heirs with Christ. We're baptized into His death. We put on Christ. Amen. We put on the new man. You know how the Word of God tells you to, to put off the old man and put on the new? And the preacher tells you, you got to do this, and you got to do that to put on the new man, and you need to come to church, and you need to praise the Lord, and you need to do this, and you need to do that. You need to get in the spirit to put on the old man. Have you ever had people try to teach you how to put on the new man? Have you ever had people try to teach you how to put on the new man by doing something and not doing something? But the Word tells us right here, that the moment that we believed, we were baptized into Christ, and we put on Christ. That's right, amen. We put on the new man. Why? Because we were placed into the covenant. That's right. 
We were hidden in the covenant. We were hidden not only in the covenant, but we were hidden in the covenant maker. Amen. Not, even, not only were we hidden in the covenant maker, but we were hidden in the one that he made covenant with. Yes, yes. What did Jesus say? He, he said that we were hidden in Christ, in God. Yes, I believe that was Paul that said that we're hidden in Christ, in God. Not only are we hidden in the one who made the covenant, but we're hidden in the one whom he made the covenant with because they're one. Amen. And now we're one with them. Yes. In him, That's we're right. one. Mm -hmm. That's how you put on the man, Amen. the new man, yes. by faith in, in the covenant maker and the covenant that he made by faith. That's right. And continually learning how to walk in that covenant, continually learning how to walk inside that covenant that was made. Well, how do I do that, preacher? Well, how did you get in the covenant? How'd you get in? Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Robert believed God. Yes. And it was accounted unto him for righteousness. That's right. Brother Don believed God. Yes. And it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Yes. Amen. But what did you believe? You believed that you was a sinner. That's right. And Jesus Christ was the Savior. Yes. Amen. And he Hallelujah. accomplished on your behalf. He That's paid right. your redemption. He paid yes. for your ransom at Calvary's cross. Amen. That's how you entered into. That's how you were baptized into Christ. Yes. This is what people need to know. That's right. Every single day that they walk, every single day that they try to live for Christ, they need to constantly be reminded of this truth yes. so that they can continually put on the new man and stop trying to put on the new man by doing this and that and the other because when that takes place, when they're taught this, it hinders and it frustrates the grace of God. And they find themselves tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, tossed to and fro by everything that comes about. That's why you see the, the ones that you see truly standing up against false doctrine are preachers of the cross. Because the cross dissolves everything else. It lays everything else down. Yeah, it lays it to right. the side. It lays away the purpose-driven life. It, weighs, it, it lays waste to Catholicism. It lays waste to uh, UPC. It lays waste to every other religion yeah. that tries to stand up and claim Christianity. That's right, man. Because it always brings you back to the covenant. Amen. To only the covenant. Nothing else. It always brings you back to so and so believe God. Mm -hmm. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Amen. And because of that, they became a partaker of everything that Christ had to offer. Yes, Remember, right. when they say, yeah, well, that's good to get saved, but then you got to do this and you got to do that. Then you just go back, and I can't remember exactly what verse it, it is, but it's easy to find. If you Google it, it'll bring you right to it where it says that he's given us all things. All things, that's right. All things yes. Oh, yes. that pertain to living and godliness Amen. in Christ right. Jesus. Everything. No, he didn't just give me a little bit and I got to earn the rest. The Word of God says he's given me all things. All things, that's right. So either he's given me all things or he has it. That's right. And if he has it, then we need to push the Word of God aside and find out where this real Word is. Uh -huh. But the Word of God said he's given us all things. All things. That's why we teach over and over the covenant. Yes. That's why we're constantly teaching who Christ is and what He did because right, who Christ is and what He did gives you all yes, things. That's right. It gives you all things. Yes, all things. All things, all things all that things. pertain to living and godliness. Yeah, but preacher, I want a big fancy car and a big old house where you need to go down the road because I'm not telling you that's what He came to give you. No. Nope. He said all things that pertain to living and godliness. godliness. In other words... He ain't going to let you starve to death. That's right. You're going to get you something to eat. That's right. He ain't going to let you die out in the freezing cold. He'll keep you warm. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, it might not be a fancy house. You might not want to have company over. That's right. You yeah. might not like them seeing what you're living in, mm -hmm. but he'll take care of you. That's right. Hey, man, he'll take care of you. He'll provide for his. Right. Amen. He'll provide everything we have need of. Not only that, but he, He'll give us all things that we need according yes, to godliness. Right. Yes. According to walk a godly life. That's right. He'll give us what we have need of. Amen. I'm here to tell you that if you're saved and you're born again and the Spirit of God lives in you, that your greatest desire should be to live a godly life. That's right, man. Oh, yes. 
Your greatest desire should be to live a godly life. Amen. If you find that you're more concerned about your car, your house, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your relationship, your animals, your this, your that, whatever it is, if you're more concerned about that, then you are living a godly life. If you're more concerned about your friendships, then you are living a godly life. Then either one of two things is, is taking place. Either you're not in right relationship with God or you're not saved. That's right. One of two things. Either you're not in right relationship or you're not saved. That's right. Because if you're walking in right relationship and you're saved, He's going to give you a desire yeah. to live for Him. Yeah. He's going to give you a desire to walk upright before Him. Mm, right. I guarantee you that's His will because Paul said it, even the sanctification, even unto sanctification, mm -hmm. that we live a holy life, a separated life. Mm -hmm. He's called us to that. He's called us to be separate. He's called us to look different from the world. He's called us to walk and talk and to be different from what the world is. He didn't call us to look like the world and act like the world to win the world. He didn't call us to promote the world to try to get the world in. He called us to, to live holy and separate unto Him, walking by faith in who Christ is and what He did. He didn't call us to look like them, church. He called us to be separate, to be different. I'm just going to keep reiterating that. It's important that we understand that, that we know that, and we, we, have the, we have the way that we're supposed to attain to that. We know how to do that by walking by faith and trusting in Him to change us. And we're going to get a little further into that here going back to Romans chapter 4. As we continue to talk about Abraham and how his life kind of looks similar to ours. Uh, chapter 4 and verse 15 we're going to start at 13, 14 and read into it. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. And the promise made of none effect. Why? Because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. The law worketh. It means the law causes. The law brings about wrath. The law brings about whose wrath? God's wrath. It brings about God's anger against you. Why? Because you're a lawbreaker. You're a lawbreaker. That's all the law could ever bring between you and God was anger. God's wrath because law, sin, broken law has to be dealt with. Sin has to be dealt with because He's a godly God. He's a holy God. He's a righteous and a just God. God has been demeaned to a God that just loves everybody and everything and He's okay and He accepts everything. But that's not true. That's not the case. He is love. But He's holiness and He's righteousness. And if you don't approach Him in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, you will be dealt with. That's right, you will. Not because He wants to deal harshly with you. No, because He has to. That's right. Because it's who He is. Oh, yes. It's who He is. That's right. And sin brings about His anger. Sin brings about His wrath. That's right. Broken law brings about His wrath. And that's what the writer is saying here. That it can't be by law because the law works wrath. That's right. You would. For where no law is, there is no transgression. That's right. For where no law is, there is no transgression. What does that mean? That means God wouldn't have gave them the law that's if right. they wasn't guilty. Man, that's true, man. That's right. There wouldn't have been no need for it. That's right. If they wasn't guilty. That's right. There wouldn't have been no need for the law. That's true. If there was no transgression. Mm -hmm. That's right. But because there was transgression, law was brought forth. Why? To call sin sin. That's right. To call it what it is and to show them what it is, to expose them to it. That's right, man. What did Paul say? He he said, I wouldn't have known not to lust, except the law said, Thou shalt not covet. The law told him what it was. The law was brought forth, and that's what the writer's saying here. That's what the apostle's saying. That's right, man. The law wasn't given for you to be righteous. Nope. Uh -uh. It was given because of transgression. That's right. The law can never make you righteous because it brings about God's anger. It brings about God's wrath on unrighteousness. So what it was meant to do will show you that you broke the law. That's right. Yeah. Then show you that God's a holy, righteous God That's right, yeah. that brings that His anger will be poured out on, on those who break the law. Right. And then it will cause you to do like David and fall down and say, Oh God, have mercy on me. 
Oh God, have mercy on me. That's why shame on churches that don't preach against sin. Shame on churches that have diluted God to a God that just says, Oh, everything's alright and nobody's going to hell. Let me just tell you like this. If you're not born again and you're not found hidden in Christ, you will spend eternity in a fiery devil's hell. That's right. Well, you're trying to scare me. Well, you ought to be scared. That's right, though, yes. Uh, you ought to be scared because it's real. That's right. Hell is real. It's real. It's eternal. It, it doesn't stop. It's forever. Well, I just don't believe that fairy tale. Well, I hope you don't wait until you die to decide to start believing. Because let me tell you something. You're going to believe one day. That's right. You will believe one day. The Word of God says every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I don't care what the people at work say. I don't care what the people at the schoolhouse say. I don't care what the professor says. Let me tell you something. I've come to a personal experiential knowledge with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I know that He's real. I don't care what the scientists say. I don't care what Stephen Hawking says. I don't care what Obama says or anybody else says. I I know my God's real. That's right, man. I know He's real yeah. because He changed me. That's right. He set me free. Amen. Hey, man. That's right. He man. set me free. I was talking to Brother Luke about that today, man. And I said, you know, man, I, I just remember, and I always go back to the time the Lord set me free from smoking. And He spoke, He spoke a rhema word to my heart. Nobody else might not know what I'm talking about, but all I can do is explain it the best I can. The Lord said, lay it down and trust me, and I never smoked a cigarette since then. That's right, man. Not because I had some super faith, no, but because He spoke faith into my heart. That's he spoke right, a word yes. into my heart. That's and there ain't nobody that can take that away. And there ain't nobody that can tell me that that's not real. It is real. You might tell me I'm crazy, but I know what He did. That's right, man. I know how He changed me. Yes. And I'm telling you, hell is real. And I just, I, I, I beseech you, like Paul would say, don't wait till it's too late to find That's out right. and, and That's believe. Right. If you're having trouble believing, ask the Lord to show you. Ask the Lord to reveal Himself to you. Tell Him, Lord, I want to be saved. I want to know you. I need you to do something in my heart, though, Lord. I need you to make it real, Lord. I need, I don't think I'm born again, Lord. I need you to make sure that I'm born again, Lord. Do what you have to do. Bring me to a place to where I can accept you by faith and be born again because I need to know you, Lord. I want to know if you really are who this word says you are. I can promise you, if you start to cry out to that, cry out to the Lord with a heart that's true about that, He'll show you who He is. Yes, he, he showed Cornelius. Yes. He showed Cornelius. He showed the Ethiopian. That's right. When the Ethiopian was reading the scriptures and he couldn't understand, he showed him. Yeah. And he'll show you too. That's right, man. Amen. He's, he's real. Yeah. The law worketh wrath. That's right. The law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Hence the covenant in Christ. Remember in Christ? What do we talk about when we talk about in Christ? We talk about in the sphere. The sphere of Christ. I should have that board out here. I could draw a big circle. I could draw two big circles. Mm -hmm. Two big circles. One of them's in Christ and one of them's in Adam. Mm -hmm. In Christ, there is no transgression. Mm -hmm. In Christ, there is no transgression, so there's no need for the law. In Christ, the law is fulfilled. In Christ, our, our life, our righteousness is based on the covenant that Christ made with God at Calvary's cross on our behalf. And in that sphere... In that sphere, we're accepted. We're righteous in God's eyes by faith. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Am I, am I making it pretty clear what I'm saying? Yeah. But in Adam, mm -hmm. in Adam, there's law. That's right, man. And in Adam, sin reigns over you and I. That's right, man. And in Adam, God's anger will be poured out. Oh, well, yes. That's so right. you can either receive God's anger and wrath in Adam, or you can receive it in Christ. Let me tell you something. Iniquity was found in Adam. That's right, dude. But there was no iniquity found in Christ Jesus. There's no sin found in Him. Hey, man, He got up. We just celebrated resurrection. Yes, indeed. Amen. We just celebrated resurrection. And now, because of the message of the cross, yes, amen. because of Christ crucified, we understand the resurrection was the validation that what Christ did at Calvary was successful. 
we understand that at, at Calvary, Christ was a success. Yes, he was. Not like Kenneth Copeland and his clowns say, he didn't go to hell and burn and die and get beat up and, and he had to win his victory in hell. No, he won his victory at the cross. That's right. He said, it's finished, it's over, tetelestai. Mm -hmm. It's finished. Yes, finished. And he gave up the ghost. The Word of God says He gave up the ghost. It, it says that He didn't go to hell and, and get beat up and get chained down. No, it says He went to hell and He preached. That's what the Word of God says. He went down into the underworld and He preached the gospel to those demon spirits that were chained up, those fallen angels that was chained up. I have a feeling that He went down in front of them and said, I'm the one that He was talking about. I'm the seed of the woman that came to crush the head of the serpent. I'm the one whom you used to worship but you turned against. I'm the one that you could have served for eternity but instead you're locked up here. That's right. The Word of God says that He went into the underworld and He preached. Amen. Amen. You want to be found, church, in Christ Jesus. You want yes. to be found in the covenant. That's right. This is how you want to walk every single day of your life. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. Faith and grace. Mm -hmm. Faith and grace. God does not work on any other merit, on any other basis. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. Therefore, it is of faith. Why? That it might be by grace. Everything that you receive from God is by faith through grace. Right. By grace through faith. Everything right. that you receive from God is by grace through faith. It's by grace through faith. Well, what does that mean, preacher? That means you don't get anything from God because you've done something good. No, that's right. Well, it don't work like that. Well, I, I thought that if I pay tithes, that, that the Lord will take care of me. <laughs> well, He is. He will. Yeah, he will. If you do it by faith. That's right, by faith. In his plan, realizing that the only reason that you can live by his plan is because Christ gave you access to that. That's right. He did. The only reason, the only way that you can that you can realize and even be a part of that is because of what Christ did for you at Calvary's right. cross. Do you get what I'm saying? That's Everything right. that you receive has to come by grace through faith. Amen. That's right. Every bit of it. Therefore, it is a it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law. But to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Verse 17, we're fixing to look at real quick. Because this is where the word of faith gets their speaking things into existence. From this verse right here. And I actually saw it on Facebook the other day. A guy, a guy uh, he, he used this and he said, you see, we're supposed to speak things. And I almost jumped in there, but the Lord checked me this time. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm backing up. I'm not getting, I'm just going to step back and I ain't even going to mess with this. No need to cause an argument with somebody who ain't even going to listen to me. And the Lord checked my spirit. But they wrote about this and I had listened to some of the, they, they had did like a little dissertation or whatever where they put some notes and I, and I read it. And, and this right here just is where they get the word of faith, one of their mottos from. And it says, as, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Who made Abraham a father of many nations? God. God did. Before him whom he believed, even God. Who quickeneth the dead? Who quickens the dead? Christ. God. God. And calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who calls those things which be not as God. though they were? God. That's talking about God. That's not talking about you and I speaking no. things into existence. That's not what it's talking about. No. That's talking about God That's right. calling things that aren't what they are. What you talking about, preacher? Well, I'm talking about he's looking at an old rotten sinner like me and Robert all messed up. We know we messed up. We know we full of sin. We know we all messed up. But God told us if we'll believe in his plan that he'll look at us and call us righteous. Even though we know we're not. But he'll look at us and call us righteous. Why? Because we believed his plan. That's right, man. It's God who calls those things which aren't yes. into what they are. Mm -hmm. He's the one that quickens the dead. That's right. He's the one that speaks life into existence. And you and I, we have the power of life and death in our tongue. What do you mean, preacher? I thought we couldn't speak things. You can speak the gospel. Yes, man, that's right. And the gospel is a gospel of life. That's right. It's the gospel of peace. Yes. You can speak life. Oh, yes. Don't you know his name? Don't you know the name of life? Jesus. Every time you say Jesus, you speak in life. That's right, man. Speak life. 
Speak life. That's right. That's speak good. Jesus. Yes. Amen. Speak Jesus. Amen. That's right. oh, speak the gospel. Life. Speak the word. Speak. You can speak the promises of God. That's right, God. The promises that God has given you in Christ yeah, Jesus, you right. can speak those things. Yeah, Why? Yeah. Because they're yours in Christ. That's right, man. But you but see that old word of faith said, oh, if you're sick, you ain't supposed to say that you're sick. Because that's that's not faith. No, it's not. I like how Brother Swagger makes fun of it. He said, people walk around dying, got fever 110, talking about I am. I'm not sick. I'm not sick. I'm healthy, Amen. coughing, about to die over here in pneumonia. Talking Amen. about you ain't sick. That's not faith, that's stupidity. Yeah, it is stupid. That's stupidity. That's right, it is. Talking about you think you can speak your bank account into being a millionaire. <laughs> they done gave all their money to the preachers. They can't even afford their rent no more. And they're still trying to speak money into the bank account. That's right, man. That's the stupidity that we fall for. It is so true. That's the stupidity that we go after. Mm, that's right. When we're not born again, when we're not founded on the doctrines of who Christ is mm. and what He did. Why do we go after those things? Because that's the things our heart wants. That's right. Uh, our hearts chase after that's right. big bank accounts. Uh, so we, man, that sounds good. I'm going to try that. I'm going to start trying to speak that into existence. Next thing you know, we're so wrapped up in the false doctrine that we end up like Brother Curtis Hutchison, bankrupt. That's right. Bankrupt. That's what happened to Brother Curtis Hutchison. He got so wrapped up in the word of faith, gave all his money to the preachers, ended up bankrupt, losing his house, his land, everything. Mm -hmm. Losing everything. Mm -hmm. But he got everything back. Oh, yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. He got everything. He got his land back. Everything back. He got his house back. He got it all back. Mm -hmm. But the Lord had to bring him to a place. That's right. Oh, yeah. Let him be led to a place That's of right. brokenness, yeah, of destruction. Oh, yeah. So he was ready to hear that word. That's right. Don't get caught up in that speaking that's things right. into existence mess and that word of faith mess. People will take scriptures like that. They'll twist it all around oh, yeah, for you, mess you up, and get you believing that junk. That's right, that's right. They'll say, you see, you're supposed to speak life. And look, you can speak things into existence. Yes. No, that's talking about God. You can speak life. The name is Jesus. His name is life. That's right. You can claim the promises God has given you in Christ Jesus. That's right, man. But stick to that. Stick to scriptural things. Amen? Yes, yes, amen. Who against hope believed in hope this is good stuff right here, man. I hope I still got a little while left to go. Y'all stay awake with me. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall that thy seed be. Do y'all see how that kind of translates into our lives? Let me ask you, sitting here today, besides any of you that are self-righteous, but any of you that are really real and sincere with yourselves, do you ever look at your life and your walk with God and think, my God, I'm hopeless? Amen. My God, I'm hopeless. Oh, Jesus. Yes. I'm, a, I'm a hopeless wreck. Yes. That, that's me. That's my life. Mm -hmm. But the Word of God says, Abraham against hope. Mm -hmm. When it looked hopeless. Mm -hmm. Amen. He believed in hope. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Against hope. Mm -hmm. He believed in hope. What does that mean, preacher? Well, let me, let me show you how this translates to you and our life. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 5. I hope I'm not boring y'all too much. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 5. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness yes. by faith. That's right, by faith. Yeah. We wait yes. for the hope of righteousness Amen. by faith. Even against hope. When things seem hopeless in our life, like we can never be changed, like there, Lord, I just don't know how you're going to take that out of me. I don't know how you're going to suppress that. I don't know how you're going to get rid of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But just like Abraham mm -hmm. believed God and it was accounted unto Ab to yes. him for righteousness, just like Abraham against hope believed in hope. That's right. Against man. hope, he believed in hope. I'm telling you, church, that today, against hope in your life as an individual, those things that you feel are hopeless, that you look at and, and there's no hope, continue to believe in hope. Amen. Continue to believe in who Christ is and yes. what he did, that that, right. that that affords you the Spirit of God to, to come in and bring about the hope of righteousness mm -hmm. that you're waiting on. Let me tell you, the more I walk this walk and the more I live this life, the more I realized that there's nothing that's going to get done inside of me unless the God of all creation does it Himself. Amen. There's things in me that can never be taken out unless the Spirit of God moves upon my heart and does a magical, I, say, I shouldn't have said magical, I'm sorry, does a, a, a spiritual 
yeah. surgery, not a magical. It is, no. it is kind of magical because we don't. It's mis, it's mysterious. That's right. It but I'm not talking about a hocus pocus no. magic. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about a hocus pocus spell magic. I'm talking about the spirit of God, mm -hmm. the breath of God, the life of God at work in an individual's heart. Mm -hmm. Doing things in yeah. him. Just like that song we sang earlier, creating mm -hmm. creating me a clean heart. That's right. That's and renew a right spirit within me. within me. And I'll tell you something that happened, and maybe this is just funny or, or whatever, or maybe it's just kooky. I was thinking about this on the way over here after I dropped Cadence off. I'm telling you, I've been riding around in my truck for the last two years. I don't even know how long. My air conditioner ain't worked. The blower don't work. It just, I can feel cold air there, but the blower don't blow. And I'm riding now, I get in the car and turn it on early and the air conditioner just starts working. It just starts working and I'm thinking, man, that's cool. And I start thinking about the Lord and I say, you know, the Lord, He can do those things. We think, we think, well, you know, that's kind of stretching a little bit. I'm not saying the Lord did it or He didn't do it. I'm saying, but He can. Yeah, He can. I'm saying he can. He's the, he's the God of all creation, right. and, and we limit him to so many things. But because I was thinking, I said, I said, oh man, I was thinking about the Lord. I said, nah, the Lord just happened, you know. But then I thought, I said, wait up, man. I said, hold on. You're trying to put limitations to what the Lord can do. This is the God who created your body right. and created the world by just a word. And if he wanted to speak a word to that wiring or whatever's messed up, he, he, can, he can do it. There you go. Oh, yes. He can do it. Oh, yeah, it can. I remember listening to stories from Brother Swagger talking about how he used to have to lay hands on his car just so he can make it from town to town. That's right. And we think, oh, God. No, he, he's our God. That's right. He's a good God. Well, why are you using that story, preacher? I'm just showing you that he's the God that can come into your hopeless situation. He can fix the wire on your air conditioner or he can fix the broken wire in your heart. That's right, man. By just a word. By just a word. And you have access to that because he's your father. That's right, man. Yes. He's your, well, he wouldn't do that for me. You're his child. That's right. That's right. In Christ Jesus, yeah. you're his. You belong to him. Amen. Yeah, that's right. You're in covenant with him because of yeah. the blood, the, the precious yeah. blood that yeah. was spilled yeah. on your behalf. You wasn't redeemed with, with such a things as silver or gold that rot away, but with the precious blood of the Lamb. Yes. Amen. He bought you with his precious yeah. blood. Why wouldn't he do everything for you? Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Why wouldn't he do everything for us? Yes, yes, yes. Why wouldn't he provide for us? Why wouldn't he take care of us? Why wouldn't he help us in our time of need? He died for us. Amen. That's right, he did. And that's what you became a partaker in. Yeah, yeah but I'm so rotten, preacher. You was rotten when he gave his life for you. Amen, that's right. You wasn't even alive in your rottenness yet when he died for you. Amen. That's right. You've been dead. Don't you understand that you're in covenant? Your life is not your own. No. You belong to him. You've been bought with a price. Come out from amongst them and be ye separate because the Spirit of God lives in you. Amen. That's right. You're in covenant. Thank you. Hallelujah. And I'm still believing that, you know what, my air conditioner is just going to keep working. Amen, that's right. That it's just going to keep working that's and I ain't right. going to have to spend no money to get it no, fixed. That's right. And then maybe Gabrielle will start letting me use her car and I can use, and she can use my truck. That's right, man. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. She said, <laughs> she, said, she said he's going to have to fix the water pump first. Uh-oh. <laughs> Amen. But he's a good guy. That's right. And if he decides to speak a word today, it can be fixed. That's exactly. I believe that. Amen. And I'm being persuaded, amen. Yes, Lord. I'm yes. being persuaded. Yes. That he can do uh, what's what's the scripture that he can do more abundantly, exceedingly abundantly. I, I can't even think of. What is it? Above all that we ask or think. Above all that we ask or think. Then that's right. It's he can do it. Oh yeah, and he wants to do it. Oh yeah, wants to do it. But he wants us to walk in covenant, church. Yes. He wants us to walk in covenant. He wants us to walk in covenant. But to be able to walk in covenant, church, you've got to know about the covenant. That's right. You've got to have an understanding of, a, of the covenant. And that's why it's so important yes. that we're in churches that teach the covenant. Amen. Let me ask you, how can you walk in something that you don't know nothing about? That's so true. How can you walk in covenant if you don't know nothing about the covenant? Oh, if you're not being taught what the covenant is and how you got in it? Mm -hmm. How can you walk in it? It's impossible. 
But let me tell you something. God's making a way right now. I was talking to Ross yesterday, and just like, or the day before, I can't remember, but I guarantee you, I believe with all my heart that there's some people around here that are listening to Sun Life Broadcasting. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm not talking about just people that listen to it because they like the music, because they got some of those too. They just like the music. Mm -hmm. They can care less, really, about the message. I've done run into a few of those. But I'm talking about people with a broken heart. Yes. That the Lord's dealing with. Yes. Right. And He's going to start to show them. Yes. Let me tell you, when I first started hearing this message and I started realizing that it was different than what I was hearing, I started looking for another church. I started looking for a church preaching this message. And I didn't find one. And that's why we're where we're at today. Because yes, I didn't find one. And when I left, I decided I wasn't going to sit in one <laughs> that wasn't preaching the message. And I also decided that I couldn't sit at home and have church at the house because that ain't church you might be able to get what you need but it ain't church no, it's not. but I believe that there are people around here that the Lord's dealing with Yes. and they might not even know about us yet but sooner or later <laughs> the Lord's going to show them oh, yes. he's going to lead the way yes. and we're yes. going to keep teaching this message just for yes. that but you see how we're how, how I'm equating us to Abraham how that we're waiting on this hope against hope amen I'm trying to get through this y'all bear with me y'all in a hurry good oh. okay I'm glad Go ahead and preach. Brother Don said, go ahead and preach. I'm preaching. Preach on, brother. Right. Amen. Romans chapter uh, 4, verse 17, verse uh, 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And here, this is the hope that he believed against hope. Against hope, he believed in hope. And verse 19 tells us what that is. And not be, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. See, this once again goes back to you and I. Our problem is, is that we're, we're dead in sins and trespasses. Yeah, true, we're full of the sinful nature. And we have not in our own capacity the ability to live for God. Amen. But Ephesians uh, uh, chapter chapter two, if we were to go there, chapter two, verses one through six, I'm not going to do it today. Tells us that through what Christ did for us, that God has quickened us, That's what he did. that we were made alive in yes. Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 We were made alive in Him. Amen. So we see that our own bodies, in and of themselves, just like Abraham, is dead. And has no ability to produce the promises of God. Nope. But through faith in the work of God, God Himself will produce those things Amen. in us and through us. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I'm talking about the covenant of Abraham. Oh, yes. He's I'm talking about the covenant of you and me. Amen. The covenant of Jesus Christ. This yes. is justification by faith. Yes, amen. That's right. This is how it works. This is what takes place. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. And now we've got to learn how to walk in that. That's right. How to walk in that covenant today. Mm, that's right. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Mm. He staggered not at the promise of God through what? Being perfect? Mm. Through doing the right thing all the time? Through getting it right all the time? No, not through any of that, but through unbelief. Oh. It was, he, he didn't stagger through unbelief. He believed God. Right. He continually believed God. Even when he made Ishmael, yep, he still believed God. Oh, yeah. He just tried to help him out. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that he didn't believe him. He just wanted to help do it. That's right, man. He believed God the whole time. Yes. Even when he failed, even when he, mm -hmm. he did this and he did that and he did all these things, he believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Yes. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded mm -hmm. that what he had promised he was able also to perform mm, that's right man he was able also to perform that's right. he promised to sanctify you he promised to work in you he promised to do some things in you that you can't see as conceivably possible Mm -hmm. But He promised it to you in Christ Jesus. Yes, he did. And it's up to you to walk after that, believing continually that He's able to perform in you what He said He's going to perform. That He's able to do in you what He said He's going to do. Mm -hmm. Even when it don't look good. <laughs> even when you feel like you're about 180 and you don't even see a glimpse of righteousness in your life yet. But you keep on walking. 
Yes. And you keep believing. Yes. That he's able. Yes. To do what he said he's able to do. Yes. Not because you did anything no, good. No, no. no, but because he's good. Yes. Amen. And he said he could. Yes. And he died to give himself access into your heart right. to do that. Yes. And therefore it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. It wasn't just for him. God didn't have this written for, for, for just Abraham. No, he had it written for you. And for me, and that's why we're learning it today. That's why we're not studying out the purpose-driven life. Because the scriptures was written for us. That's right, indeed. For our sake. That's right. That's not when, that's why we're not studying out of uh, your best life now or being the best person you could be. It's why we're studying out of the scriptures because Abraham and his relationship with God is an example for you and I. Mm -hmm. How that we have access to the same things Abraham had access to. Mm -hmm. Except that we have the fulfillment of it in Christ Jesus and Abraham just had the type. That's good preaching. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed mm -hmm. to whom it shall be imputed if what if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead right. who was delivered for our offenses mm -hmm. and was raised again for our justification right. mm -hmm. he paid for our offenses and he got up so that we could get up with him amen, amen. I'm here to tell you that's that's justification by faith that's the covenant that we're walking into now mm -hmm. we're going to get into in chapter 5, Romans 5, and we're going to start getting into that. Not next Wednesday because I won't be here. Man, I hate when that happens. But we're going to start getting into that. And I might even start teaching it this weekend. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe Sunday night. I might, I might jump into it Sunday night because um, I have something else I want to hit on Sunday morning. But I might jump into this Sunday night and really start. Because now that we're, we know we're justified... Right? We know that we're saved by grace through faith. We're righteous in the eyes of God. And then it tells us, therefore, therefore, because of all this, because of everything I've just said, that's what therefore means, looking back, mm -hmm. that's right. being justified by faith, yeah. we have peace with God that's right. through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's right, man. Because we're justified, yeah. we have peace. Yes, amen. And then it says we have access by faith. Now we're going to find out what we, I'll, I'll just keep preaching this if I, I mean, if I keep on, I'm just going to keep on. I ain't going to stop because it's good stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and stop right now and tell you that we're getting into some really good stuff and some really important stuff. And I'm here to tell you that this is stuff that people would say is elementary. Oh yeah, everybody knows that. But the truth is everybody don't know that. Everybody's probably heard the word justified and they're, no, they're not guilty. But that's about the extent of it. And if they do more, know more than that and they're not teaching it, then they ought to be ashamed of themselves. That's right. They ought to be ashamed of themselves from not teaching it. But we're fixing to start learning some good stuff. I really hope that what we're doing here and what we're going through is helping your walk with God. I'm, I hope that it's, it's giving you something to hold on to and it's just giving you a better all-around understanding of who Christ is and what He did and also who you are in Christ. Who you are in Christ because that's important to know who you are yeah. in Christ. That you're victorious, amen, that you're righteous and that you can do all things. Through Christ who strengthened you. Not because of you knowing that scripture. But because you know where you're at. And you know how this thing works. Amen. Amen. You got to know how it works. That's right. Before you can start to try and walk in it. Amen. Let's stand together. Father we just come before you tonight. Lord God we thank you. For your mercy and your grace. We thank you for your great plan Lord God. Father, we just thank you that you saw fit, Lord God, to teach us. Yes, to guide us. That to, to open our eyes, Lord yes, God, to Lord, your plan. Yes. Father, we ask that you'd have your way in your church, Lord God, that you'd open eyes and open hearts, Lord God, that you'd give a revelation of your mighty word and your gospel yes. to other ministers, Lord God, to preachers around, Lord God, to, to other people around, Lord God, and that, Lord, that you would open up every church around here that would be preaching the message of the cross, Lord God. I'm not in a competition, Lord God. I, I just want everyone to preach this message, Father. Lord, we ask that you would just continue to give us eyes to see and give us ears to hear, Father. And most of all, that you would allow us to stay humbled before you, Lord God. We ask that you'd keep us safe this week, that you'd guide us and lead us in Jesus' name. Amen.